an investor's perspective on what's going on in China today. Um, and for that, we're going to talk to Jim Oberweiss. He's on the phone with us, president and portfolio manager at Oberweiss Asset Management. His Oberweiss China Opportunities Fund was in the 98th percentile for 2009. So, Jim, from an investing perspective, I mean, there's a lot of sort of, uh, one could say, posturing on the part of, of, of both sides here. Does it affect your, your perspective uh, in terms of China's growth? I mean, sure, it, it does. But I think if, if you look and you take all the political posturing out of the equation and you look at the rational choices for both sides, the rational choice for both sides is to really do nothing. And you're actually seeing that come out in, in the press conference. There's nothing really new. I mean, from, from China's perspective, I think they do need a gradual change to stem inflation, to, to stem asset bubbles. But I'm talking about a change over a period of years. From the U.S. perspective, sure, they'd love to see the RMB approach appreciate, but they have no leverage to really force that to happen except to tariff. And the tariff generally isn't going to be in anybody's interest either. Now, again, when you put Congress into the equation, uh, rationality doesn't always win out. Uh, and, I, and I would leave the possibility that, that you do get some populist tariff uh, to go through. I'm just not saying it would be smart. So we watch it. You know, our China perspective has always been uh, one of focusing on the emerging middle class. The export game is finite. It'll move to Vietnam. It'll move to the next cheapest uh, city uh, or, or country in the event that uh, China labor costs rise or that the RMB rises. Uh, so, so we're anticipating that. We're betting on the development of the economy and increased domestic consumption uh, over time. And I think that's what will probably drive uh, uh, the success or failure of our investments. So when you hear Wen Jibao talk about, you know, a 20 percent appreciation essentially crippling the country or, or causing skyrocketing um, unemployment, do you think he's exaggerating a little bit because you think this, this middle class is going to step into the gap? Exaggerating, yes, but would there be an effect? Absolutely. 40% would be dramatic. Um, do I think it would cripple the country? No. I mean, I think you can look at what happens when exports in China decline by looking at the, um, the effects of the recession in the U.S. on China, Chinese exports. It was very significant. The economy as a whole was able to escape uh, um, the, the slowdown because the government ramped up infrastructure spending and, and government expenditures, but exports were really hammered uh, during that period. So, so, yeah, I think an uptick in costs in China would certainly affect exports, which would have some effect on the economy. That's why I think a nice, slow, gradual process is probably going to be in China's best interest, uh, even if it isn't the U.S.'s first preference. All right, Jim Oberweiss of the Oberweiss China Fund. Um, Jim, thank you very much for your perspective. Appreciate it. Thanks much.